Today we're shooting a video on how to use one of our deep locks and turn it into a lanyard system where you take the deep lock and you open the end of the lock up and you have a cord that runs through your pin and through the lock and you're able to take an AK and make a lanyard pull out of the AK. So what we've got is our five degree offset lanyard plate. I've got it set up here in the jig with a deep lock already glued on. So what I've done is mounted this in my jig. I've taken my lock, got it ready to laminate, set it down in the jig, and then I just tagged it back here to temporarily hold it. When I'm done, when that sets up, when it's done and set up, I'm gonna flip it over, take my pyramid off, and then I'm gonna fill in any voiding that may be around the stem of my lock. The one thing I wanted to talk about in this video is when you get ready to do this, and if you're using a, a R5 degree offset or any other connector, bear in mind that you're using a long lock body so it has a really deep pin set and you want to make sure that when you get ready to set this up and you're going to put a hole through the end of it, you'll be able to pull that rope through and get that pin right at the end of this. And you want to be careful of what kind of adapter you set on the bottom of your connector. So what I'm getting at, as you can see here, without any of the washers on it, if I put that on there, it sticks out to the end of my post where you actually have your connector and it also would hit the connector. So you have to be careful how you set it up so you don't run into your connector. And now you can't make a hole go through it. You may have a rotable on here, maybe a pyramid. Whatever connector you put on, you have to allow clearance for the pinhole coming out the end of this lock. So on this one, is because the way this person's set up, I wanna go ahead and use my three washers and stand this off of the connector. And you can see, if we go back to this type of a, a pyramid, this cloverleaf pyramid, I have plenty of room to come out of the end of this with the lanyard rope. Now your pin should come right to the end of that lock and it shouldn't be a problem. But if I put this same design in here and I hit the top of my pyramid like this, I can't even get my rope to come out the end of it. You have to have clearance of some kind. That's the one key thing if you're gonna use a lock in a lanyard system is to make sure whatever adapter you're putting on with your connector that you can get that rope to come back through and have clearance. So once this is set up, like I said, I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna fill in any gapping that I might have on my lock on the bottom of my lanyard connector and then I'm ready to laminate. And the only thing you have to watch when you go to laminate is to make sure that you realize you're in an outset position and to give yourself plenty of lamination and strength around here so this thing doesn't break off. After we laminate it, then we'll go and show how to punch that hole out so you can get that rope through and then make this a true lanyard lock. So now that we've laminated our socket and we have our deep lock and a connector set up, we need to punch a hole out. So when we're done, we're just like this. We want to be able to see completely through. So when we pull our lanyard through, we have a, a way to pull it up and go out of the end of the lock. So there's a couple of ways of doing it. One way is if you're lucky enough, you're out here kind of flush on the end of your lamination, you can just sand to the end of it with your troutman and then punch your hole open. Another way of doing it is to use our guide pin, the CD-103 GPN. And what you do 
is run this guide pin down inside your lock like that and then take your drill and drill the hole out and what that does it shows you on the end where your hole will be and then you can take your troutman and open it up so we've got one here we're going to go ahead and use the guide pin on and it's a quarter inch drill bit and you want to get a really long drill bit if you can so you can get down inside your socket I just made it through. Now the idea of that guide pin, what it's good for, if you try to drill a lock without the guide pin, you bang around on the edges of your lock, that's a bad deal. So if you're going to go through your lock, you need to make sure that you stay centered or stay away from your edges. And that's where that guide pin comes in really handy. So this one, we used our guide pin, we punched our hole through. Now we know where the center of that lock is, and you can either use a countersink tool right here and countersink this to find the bottom of your lock, or just take your, your Troutman and keep sanding it with your small cone until you expose it, and you end up with this. You have a hole at the bottom of your lock. This is an old socket, by the way. Let's take a look at our big one here, see if we can use the guide pin on it. It may not be deep enough, or our, our drill bit may not be long enough. Nope, we can't make it with the drill bit. But I know from laminating this that my pin is right out here on this corner. So what I'm going to do is just keep sanding until I expose the end of my lock. Let's take this one, since we've got a nice center hole, and I'll use my countersink tool just to see the bottom of it. So with this one, let's take a look at the countersink tool, see how that does. Like I said, you can do it either way. All that matters is that you open the end of that lock up so that lanyard string will pull through it. And it's nice to have that lock completely open to where the pin, if it does come out the end of it a little bit, it, it freely slides through it. You don't want it getting hung up. Yeah, you can just see the plastic on the end of the cap right there. All that countersink did was just kind of help me get the size of where it's at. Now we'll take it over the Troutman. We'll just clean that up, make a hole so our pin will pass all the way through. So let's hop over the Troutman and do that real quick. All right, so let's just take our Troutman and clean that up a little bit. Okay, let's go use our countersinking tool again. So we're right there on the top of the plastic and make that hole look a little nicer. The thing about doing this is there's gonna be a couple of different ways of doing it because every lamination is different and the way it gets set up on the end of a lock is different. One time you might be like this in a lamination and your lamination will be clear up here to these posts and you'll have to get down to this point. And you might have another scenario where your lock pin is clear through the end here and you can just sand right to it and get it. Another way of doing this, and after you punch your hole out of the end, you could take a half inch drill bit and go in there so you just get to that plastic. There's gonna be a lot of different ways of doing it. It just depends on your scenario, how you've set it up. 
we just punch through the end of the cap. That little countersink tool works nice because it gives you a nice clean hole. So now we'll check it, and if we have any hang-ups, then we'll just go over to the Troutman and smooth it up a little more. Just like that. So we're just barely hung up on the very end of that, and I like making sure that hole is clear enough for this pin to pass through. That way I know there's never going to be a problem with depth. And we're just barely hanging up on the edge. So we'll take it to our Troutman again, or you'll use our countersink tool, go down just a little bit more, and smooth those edges up. You could also take a piece of sandpaper rolled up in a nice tube and set it in there and work your sandpaper in and out just to make the edge of that hole a little smoother so that pin will pull completely through. Whichever method works best for you. The real key The real key in this with the guide pin is so you don't bang around the edges of your lock. There we go. So now we can easily pull through. Because you don't know on the depth where your lamination quits and what's going to be happening here. A person's pin might just stick out just a little ways past it. You still might be up underneath there. But it's always good to make sure you can easily slide a pin through there. Yeah, it's just a matter of taking a Troutman now and cleaning that up a little bit. We were able to get our guide pin in there and use our quarter inch drill and punch through it and then use a countersinker to get to it. That one was set up on our five degree uh, offset plate. This socket is done with a three prong sitting on here like this and the lock is on top of it in a position kind of like that right there. So since I couldn't get the long drill bit to go through the end of it to find my center of my hole, I know where the pin is sitting on the corner of that three prong. It's right there is my plastic. So what I'm going to do now is just keep sanding this and opening it up until I can see a hole clear through it and then maybe use the countersink bit just to make it look nicer or just take the Troutman and open it clear up. But I can see it right there. So let's go finish and open this up. So we just made it through. Let's do a little countersinking with it and see if we can smooth the edge up. All right, we're almost there. This one we'll have to use our Troutman. So we've got to get back inside here and smooth this edge up in the front edge. Then I'll kind of make sort of a small channel on it. So that way, when we go through it, our pin will probably bottom out right on top of that three prong. Because the way I set that up, I put the edge of that lock right on the side of it, just like that. So we'll still be able to get a pin head showing through and our lanyard will easily go through and we'll have plenty of depth inside of our chamber that we know we're going to be all the way in there. It's almost wanting to go through. Yep, we're right there. I can feel that pin, it's clear down inside that lock. So that will work great because the pin head is just passing through the bottom, which means it's more than engaged down inside the socket. So on this one, it's not going to be able to pull clear through, but we know we're going to have plenty of depth in it for the pin to go all the way in. We'll clean that up with the Troutman and that's it. What I was trying to do with the Troutman is 
kind of make a channel through here and roll this edge so that way when the string pulls across it, it's not real sharp. Really opening that up. Now I'll take a piece of sandpaper because I can't hit all of it with the Troutman. Sand that back side just a little bit. And then we'll sand down the front. Kind of roll that edge. A rat tail file works real nice too. It doesn't take much with that plastic to sand it out smooth. Get the rough off of the edges of it. Now as that string gets pulled through over and over again, that's what I'm talking about right here, trying to smooth that up. If it's sharp right there, it'll start chewing up that cord. Beautiful. That's well into the lock, way past the point where the leg will be. We know we're going to get full engagement. We'll come up and string this thing off. That's what you want to do to punch out the lanyard system. Get that hole opened up on the end of your lock. One with a three prong, one with a five degree offset lanyard adapter.